So check this out, guys. My wife picked me up this calculator today, and she didn't know very much about it, but she could already tell that it was really cool. It is an Electronica B318A, and if I'm not mistaken, this was the first pocket-sized scientific calculator in the Soviet Union. They started manufacturing these in 1976 or 1977. This particular unit is from 1980. I don't know if it works, doesn't turn on. I don't have the power adapter. These came with a power adapter that would both power the unit and also apparently charge a battery that's inside. But we're gonna get into it and see what we can do about this. Let's get started. Okay, so first thing I'm noticing is it's had a very full life. It looks like dirt, but that's actually scratches on these numbers. I don't know why the nine was used so much more than the others. But there we are. The push button functionality feels good. Don't know what grad and rad means. Uh, this is fluchit and at fluchit. I also don't know what that means. Maybe that's the main power switch. Here is our proprietary Soviet plug. And good luck finding one of these. We're going to have to come up with some sort of solution so we can get this thing powered. Tag's in great shape. Price, 220 rubles. That, I'm told, was about two months' salary for an engineer in the Soviet Union around 1977 when these were first. So this was quite an expensive device. The dates is April of 1980 for this particular unit. Factory number 11602, B318A. And we have, of course, the seal of approval made in the USSR and check this out still have wax on the only screw so nobody has been inside this thing let's crack it open okay so we can see that we've got quite a bit of corrosion that's already corroded all the way through some of these battery leads, I mean, they've detached. These are the crazy batteries from 1980. Not sure what 0.25, if that's volts, don't know. Look at this beautiful board, it's so pristine. Wonderful vacuum fluorescent display. Got two, I assume one of these pots is a, is a voltage regulator of some sort. One, two, three, four electrolytic capacitors. And the date code on them is 1979, October 1979. And then look at this super awesome chip with handwriting on it. How great is that? I don't know what that means, but I'm loving it already. I mean, that's just gorgeous. It looks like the kind of board that like you would make in your garage. It's like done with so much love. I managed to find an instruction manual for this device. I'm gonna post a link down in the description. And here are the schematics. Beautiful Soviet schematics, as always, hand-drawn. Let's skip down to the power supply. Here's our 220 volts coming in. Here's our transformer. Here's our bridge rectifier that changes the alternating current to direct current, two transistors, and then we have three outputs. Minus 6.5 volts for charging, minus five volts for operating the calculator, and then a plus line. So it's a negative voltage system. And here's our pinout for the charging connector. Great. So we don't care about the charging voltage right now. What I care about is the minus 5 volts that we need to power this device on. Okay, guys. So the concept here is we need to replace this port because we don't have that connector. The good news is that it can be 5 volts, which opens us up to a lot of USB possibilities. So check this out this thing just slides out it's like they wanted us to do this that just slides out all we're going to have to do is unsolder the back and somehow mount the, a new connector here of a usb someone in the usb family somehow inside this so that it can withstand the pressure of being plugged in and unplugged okay lots of usb you know i bought this when i first started doing computer repair our family runs a small computer repair business and I thought I would be replacing a ton of these, and I have not used a single one. It's crazy. 
first of all, no one wants USB 1 anymore, so it's pretty obsolete. But we're not going to be using one of these chunky guys because I don't think this form factor for USB is going to be around that much longer. Micro USB, perhaps, or even better, I've got these USB-C breakout boards. So let's take a look at these. First thing I'm noticing is that the insertion pressure that's needed and to pull it out is a lot. And so however we attach this, it's got to be done in a way that can withstand a lot of pressure. so close okay I may have spoken too soon because look at this once this is back in position this is designed so that it slides in right around that power connector so it'll be pretty snug actually so we actually have a lot less space to work with than I was hoping for okay guys change of plans here USB is not gonna work for us my USB-C port is just a bit too big. It's not gonna fit in there in the space we have. And the micro USB, I haven't found a way to mount that elegantly. Plus it's micro USB, which is just a notoriously unreliable format, I think. So I'm gonna dump these entirely and instead go with a DC plug jack that on the other end plugs into a phone charger or a USB charging device of some sort. And this will be a nice solution. It'll also match the round hole that we have here because the receptacle, or the, the port rather, will also be round. So hopefully that'll come out looking well. So I think what we're gonna do here is I think we're gonna get a piece of plastic or metal, cut it to size here so it slots right into this, drill some holes for these guide posts, and drill a big hole for our connector port. I think that's gonna be great. That's gonna keep it from sliding up and down and side to side. Keep it from, when you push in, it'll have this nice support. And when you pull out, we've gotta figure out a way for this not to come out. So I don't know if that's gonna be epoxy or some small screws over in this area, keeping it there if we have space for that. Let's cross that river when we come to it. Okay, and for our next trick, the USB cable. Okay, there we have it. This is our magic cable. Now, it's worth mentioning that the cable is wired normally, even though we're gonna be switching the voltages for our device because it's runs negative five volts instead of five volts. I wired the cable just as you would for a positive five volt feed because I don't want somebody in the future finding this and plugging it into some device and you know fry the device. So all of the, the switching, making it negative, we're gonna do in here. We're just gonna reverse the leads on the actual connector. Let's test this thing. There we go, guys. 5.143 volts coming into our DC port here. This is wired up properly now. Hopefully it'll fit. Okay guys, it occurs to me, we have not ever tested this calculator. For all I know, this thing is not working at all. So we're gonna give it a quick test before we move on to some of the other restoration things here. Why is there no, nothing happening? Okay. Okay, so no life, no life in this thing yet. Okay, finally got this thing working. I've been working on it for a couple hours, trying to get the numbers to light up. Replaced all four of these capacitors. These were all uh, about 50 to 70% over what they should have been as far as capacitance goes. Um, after that, I noticed that the schematics actually had two different pinouts 
for how this connector should be wired up. And man, that is just super annoying. They were not consistent. I tried it a couple different ways and finally got it to respond. As I was fooling around with it, taking a bunch of meter readings, get very frustrated. I pulled this orange transistor out to test it. And it, it at first it didn't test fine. And then I tested it again, it tested fine. And I put it back in and all of a sudden she came to life. So we're up and running now. I'm gonna proceed with the restoration. This row of buttons right here, sorry, this column of buttons was not functioning. And I couldn't figure out what was going on because this whole keypad is sealed shut. I tried to cut it open with an X-Acto knife and it's plastic welded. Then I noticed that this lead right here had broken off and there was no way for me to re-solder it because this thing, whole thing was sealed right here. So what I did is I managed to get a drill bit in and I hand drilled a hole and managed to get access to the pad and slip it in and re-solder it. So the keypad is back in action and we're on to what's next. And what's next is trying to deal with some of the scratches. I'm gonna try to run the light across it. Some of the scratches on this green tent here because they're kind of unseemly. Now, I don't think I can get those scratches out. They're kind of deep, but I did notice that the reverse side is pretty clean, especially after we give it a wipe down. This whole green tinted area is being held in by this one plastic weld. And I think that if we cut that, we can slip this out, flip it over, and we'll have a much cleaner front glass on the calculator. So we're gonna give this a go. So the question has come up a few times about what I do with these devices once I've restored them. My goal here is not to collect them or to sell them. My main goal here is to save these devices from the scavengers who are destroying them so that they can salvage a few dollars of precious metals from the components. You can see these guys all over Russian YouTube. It's really heartbreaking to watch. An entire world of Soviet electronics is disappearing. So I'm trying to show these devices to English speaking viewers before they're all gone. Okay, this uh, viewfinder plastic is looking way better like this. So we don't want these batteries. They're worthless to us. They're actually a liability because they're leaking fluid. But I do want to maintain as many of these original parts as we can. So I'm going to reinstall these battery rings back into the calculator. In case, who knows, in case down the line, somebody wants to restore this to its full glory, totally original, maybe they have an option for batteries. These would be hard to get otherwise. I am gonna wipe all these down with some alcohol, however, look at all that. Now, what I would really like to do, what I would really like to do is find a, a way to include this old battery connector in here. I just don't see a place to do that. I think it's sticking up a little bit too high. We're gonna try it. So I'm just gonna get a piece of tape. Again, down the road, if someone wants to restore this to completely original, they will have all the parts here. They can undo my work. And I welcome that. I want this to be as original as possible. Do we re-wax this screw? No, we don't, because the wax tells us that it's it was factory fresh. I don't want people to think it's factory fresh. I want people to understand that someone's been inside. Okay guys, she's all buttoned up. Looks like our DC power jack is perfectly centered in that hole. I'm loving that. I think that I think that came out really well. That was a good solution. So, DC jack going in. Wait, let's turn it off. DC jack going in. Should be powered now, and there it is. Awesome. So here you go guys, the first pocket-sized scientific calculator in the Soviet Union. 
came to us non-operational, did not have a power plug. We retrofit our own 5 volt power port and got it up and running and here we are. I couldn't be happier. It's a beautiful calculator and a wonderful piece of history. Thanks so much for coming along and I'll see you guys on the next video.